I'm going to go through the list of all the teams and make my final predictions for the Premier League table. 20th through 1st, there's a lot of teams battling it out this season in the relegation zone, in the European spots for the title. We're going to go through it, and I'm going to keep it quick, short, and concise for everybody. As always, comment down below what tier list should I make related to sports or otherwise in the future. Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more football news, football updates, and general Premier League content throughout the course of the season. Let's get into things, starting with 20th to do it luton town luton town a team that i'm excited to see in the premier league a team that's refreshing to see in the premier league they have rob edwards at the wheel managing them and i do like the way that they play i saw them play briefly towards the back end of the last championship season and i saw them in the championship playoffs for the premier league but they haven't invested a lot they've gotten some interesting talent in specifically isa kabore from manchester city on loan couple other players in on loan they're gonna try their best they're gonna give it their all and their home stadium is gonna hopefully for them be a fortress i think it's gonna be an entertaining atmosphere to play in i just don't see them really being up to the premier league standard quite yet i think they're going straight down again next up we have sheffield united sheffield united i think will be in 19th place i just don't see this squad having a lot of uh, firepower particularly I don't see the squad being necessarily that challenging for a lot of the top level Premier League teams this might come back to bite me most likely but I just have a feeling that their manager is going to be sacked very early in the season they're going to kind of flounder maybe get a new manager bounce when they appoint someone but by the time Christmas passes and we're in the new year in 2024 I think they're going to start to struggle and start to drop points. So that's why I have them in 19th. 18th, this might be a little controversial, but I have Wolves. Wolves, Wolverhampton Wanderers have lost a lot of players. Raul Jimenez, who admittedly has fallen off of a cliff in terms of form post head injury, which is sad, but he isn't the same player he used to be. He's left. Ruben Neves, their star player, their captain, has left as well. Connor Cody is gone. Uh, he was on loan at Everton last season, but doesn't really change the fact that he's been a mainstay at Wolves in a while. Joel Matinho also gone. And you, Julian Lopetegui has not been too pleased with the way that Wolves has handled, handled their transfer business this window. So at the end of the day, I just have a feeling that they're not going to be able to click this season. Adama Traore also gone. They're just losing players left and right. I don't see them investing it too well. They bought in Cunha, but I just don't think it's enough. 17th. Uh, 17th. Relegation is spelled wrong here. I did not make this list, so let's just spell that correctly. But 17th place, I think it's going to be tough to say here, but... I have a feeling it's going to be Nottingham Forest. I think they're just going to stay up. They haven't really bought many players this season. They bought a ton of players last season. They were criticized for it. Lingard didn't work out. He's gone now. I just have a feeling that Nottingham Forest will be able to kind of like scrape by just barely. Um, I don't think that there's a lot more I could say on this because they haven't necessarily made a lot of changes to their squad this summer. Um, I have a feeling that they're kind of going to have a good campaign for their standards but still gonna just be in 17th i think gary cooper probably gonna stay honestly if i were to have to guess i think that he's gonna give him a season if he could stay up he'll he'll stay in the job as well but i think they'll get 17th i think taiwo awani will have a great season but 17th is their threshold next 16th i have a feeling it's gonna be bournemouth um Andoni Iraiola is a guy who I think plays a very entertaining style of football. But at the same time, actually not 16th for Bournemouth. I didn't see Everton. I thought Everton was missing. I thought they got relegated last season. But yeah, similar season for Everton. I am a Liverpool fan, so take that as you will. But let's be honest. Everton hasn't really made any astonishing signings this summer. They haven't really reinvented their squad and last season they barely stayed up anyways 
And the season before that also barely stayed up. So as it stands, I feel like Everton, they'll stay up. They'll be ahead of, you know, Nottingham Forest in 16th and the relegated candidates. But they're not going to necessarily, um, you know, they're not going to make any major moves this season. Up next, um, honestly... I have a feeling that it's going to be, this is tough, but I have a feeling it's going to be Bournemouth. Andoni Iraiola will have a good season, I think, but I think that the squad is just very light. I think that one or two injuries could really hurt them. I think they'll play a lot better. Honestly, I think halfway through the season, they could be up kind of closer to 10th, 11th, maybe 8th. But as the season progresses, they'll slip and slip and slip and end up in 14th. Or 15th, I should say. Uh, 14th place, I am going to give to West Ham, I think. West Ham hasn't made a ton of additions either. Um, last season, they struggled in the Premier League because of the Conference League. This season, they're going to struggle in the Premier League because of the Europa League. Um, I think that they'll get knocked out probably after the group stage, if I would have to guess. They're really going to make a push early on, I think, for the Europa League to get out of the group stages get to the knockouts and i think it'll bite them again and i don't think they're going to win the europa league and i think eventually with the loss of declan rice of course they replace him with edson alvarez but that's a whole different story they lost declan rice they lost kamaka who they just signed last summer i don't see them making any big signings going forward they should but i don't know who they would sign so it's kind of like question mark for them still i'm gonna say 14th 13th 13th, I'm going to go with Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace finished 12th last season. I think they're going to have a similar season. They uh, signed that kid from Brazil, uh, Franca or Franca, I believe. He's supposedly going to be really good. We'll see how he translates to the league. Elise is still there. Eze is still there. Bazaha being gone. I think they're just going to take a slight step back. And I think Roy Hodgson will honestly guide them to an okay season, all things considered lack of investment and just general loss of talent aside i think they'll have an okay campaign uh next 12th i'm gonna go with burnley i think burnley is gonna have a smashing campaign they just signed sonder berg from sheffield united who's also gonna be a big loss for sheffield and i think that they're just gonna really come into their own this season Honestly, I have a feeling that they're going to upset City at Burnley. Whether that's a draw or a, or a win for them, I don't know. I think they're going to put a good performance out on the opening day of the season. Really set precedent for this upcoming campaign. And I think they'll finish in 12th. I think company will have a great season. Yeah. 11th, um, I'm going to have to go Fulham. Uh, Fulham. They have signed Raul Jimenez. They're kind of a mess right now a lot of links to saudi clubs for the likes of their coach um marco silva as well as alexander mitrovic their star striker now, i just kind of feel like i don't know film will languish a bit maybe have a harsh start to the season based on you know all these rumors and links and kind of lack of a true identity in the first squad until it kind of settles and i think eventually we'll see Fulham kind of climb the table as the season progresses and i think they'll stick with marco silva as the campaign unfolds 10th place um this is crazy there's a lot of teams here but i'm gonna go with brentford ivan tony being suspended definitely gonna hurt but at the same time i just have a feeling that there might be you know some some kind of bouncing back so to speak as the season progresses you know they're gonna start kind of weary and maybe not scoring as many goals as they'd like but i think brian and buemo and some other players will kind of keep them afloat and then ivan tony will come back and really kick them up the table a bit more ninth place i'm gonna go with this is tough here but i have a feeling it's gonna be tough here tough tough i'm gonna put tottenham there sorry tottenham but with kane leaving i can't justify not having Tottenham in ninth or potentially leaving even if Kane does stay I'm excited to see what Ange does but I think it's going to be kind of a transition season for Tottenham learning the new manager's kind of tactics 
and the whole saga with Kane will be at the forefront. I think Kane, if he stays, will score goals. I think if Kane leaves, Tottenham will still score goals. But I think their defense and their midfield really just isn't it anyways. So I just kind of foresee them having a difficult time, not necessarily with creativity because they did sign James Madison as well, but specifically with getting countered, defending, defending on the front foot, you know, like 1v2 situations where, you know, you got one defender and he's getting attacked by two attackers i think they're going to get destroyed in situations like that it's going to they're going to get really caught out in situations like that and i don't think they're necessarily going to have the best of campaigns despite not having european football eighth place eighth place ugh, tough to say i'm gonna go with villa people are saying they think villa is going to get you know they're going to do well but villa has conference league football and while we have a really talented manager at the wheel at villa who's, you know, going to probably do well in that competition. I think, once again, just the pure travel, the inexperience to some of the players at Villa with being in a competition like that, it's going to kind of wear on them as the season progresses. I think they could start the season really sharp, and they'll slowly drop and drop and drop and drop until they finish in eighth. But Conference League, hey, I'd say they're arguably favorites for that as of right now. Um, next up... We have seventh place. I think it's going to be Brighton Hove Albion. Brighton, another team who has sold a lot of big players, but has kept some players. Just signed Mohamed Kudus from Ajax, who's a major, major signing for them. And yeah, I think they're going to do really well this season. But a lot of people would say seventh might be kind of a failure. But if they do well in Europa, like get to the semis or something, and then get Conference League qualifying, like, that could be a huge step for them. Continuing to ensure that kind of European money comes in would be huge for a team like Brighton. So I think seventh is a good spot. Sixth place, sixth place, sixth place. Honestly, I think it's going to be Newcastle. Sue me. Sue me. I'm sorry, Newcastle fans, but I think that the Champions League is going to be a bit of a rude awakening. A lot of players who Newcastle have... At the moment, the likes of Dan Byrne, Matt Target, uh, Richie, even Callum Wilson to an extent aren't proven in the Champions League. But furthermore, they're also going to be playing a lot of games in the Premier League. I could see some rotation, obviously, but those players that are on that bench or some of the rotational aspects, now that St. Maximin's gone, especially the likes of Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon... I just don't see them really being able to put up a whole European campaign, like try to, you know, do well in the Champions League and then also do really well like last season in the Premier League. I think they're going to really suffer. I think it's going to be kind of tough for them at various points of the season, you know, around like, say, game week six of the group stage in the Champions League. I think a lot of pressure is going to be on them to qualify for knockouts and to continue to perform on the league and i think they'll pick up some major injuries along the way i don't know who but i just it's inevitable with the way that their squad is composed um next up i have chelsea in fifth i think chelsea has a squad that is very exciting but with nkunku getting that injury with some lack of kind of final investment you know they still need like a defensive mid it feels like they still need some other players to kind of round out the squad. I think they'll have a good campaign, but I think because of just the turnover in the squad, there's going to be a lot of moments where, you know, some players just aren't going to be totally tactically in tune and they'll make some mistakes. So fifth place for Chelsea. Fourth place. Honestly, fourth place, I think, is going to be Arsenal. Arsenal. No offense, but once again, another team who's going to put a lot of people up to test in the Champions League. But I think some of the signings they made are just kind of weird. I really don't love the signing of Havertz. I think Rice is good, like a great signing, but he's a little expensive. And Timber is great depth, but at the same time, offensively, they're still, you know, Gab Gabriel Jesus is injured. So Havertz is kind of playing as a nine. And then you have this kind of like 
I don't know. I just was not convinced in the Community Shield. And I know that doesn't really matter, but I think that Arsenal is going to be riding a high off that Community Shield win and think, oh yeah, we're going to really just dominate this season. I think they're going to start kind of sloppy. And then, you know, I just kind of feel that Champions League campaign is going to really take a mental and physical toll on a lot of those players. It is a really tough campaign, especially if you are trying to compete. And I feel like Arsenal is going to want to push as far as they can that competition. So I think it'll negatively impact them in the league. Third place. I'm going to put United fourth, Arsenal third. So everything I still say about Arsenal is true. I think they'll get top four, but I forgot United's on the list. And United, I just feel like, is even more of a mystery. Because while Onana is supposedly going to be a huge, you know, signing, I feel like a lot of United fans are misattributing him, you know. He is a really good distributor, but he also is really comfortable with going out of his box. There was a goal in a friendly against, I forget who, but some dude just totally lobbed uh, Andre Onana from distance. And he was so far as that he had to like backpedal and try to run back and save it. And I think that's going to happen a lot. I think that the midfield, I just don't buy it with United. Um... They give me like a vibe that's really like just not balanced, so to speak. You know, like Ericsson, Fernandez, Fred is gone. So Ericsson, Fernandez, Casemiro, and Mount. Who else is there? McTominay, I guess. It's like five people playing three positions across the 60 game season. If you're trying to compete for all the competitions, I think that's, you know, I think that's going to be tough on United. And plus, I I just feel like the squad, while there's been a lot of investment, just isn't that great. Like, Rasmus Hoyland bought for a lot of money. Big question mark still. So, we're going to see. We're going to see if United have any other kind of incomings that could change things. But in second place, I have Liverpool. And in first place, obviously, I'm Man City. And I'm a Liverpool fan, so I'll briefly talk about Liverpool. I feel like City speaks for itself. Um... Liverpool has the smallest squad in the Premier League right now. Liverpool has only made two signings and has sold seven players. But with a lot of reports coming out right now about a fourth bid for Romeo Lavia, Virgil van Dijk put out a statement about, you know, losing key players and losing your captain and vice captain in the same window and how that is kind of like reasonable to understand the doubt there. But with York Schmatka being at, you know, the friendly yesterday, if you're not aware, York Schmacka is the sporting director of Liverpool on like a three-month contract. I think there is huge opportunity for Liverpool to fully kind of round out their squad. And honestly, I think if Lavia comes in, another midfielder and maybe a defender, I think Liverpool is right there, you know? I think there's a lot of quality in the squad and a lot of youngsters who are ready to kind of come through and add some much needed depth in certain positions of the pitch i really like the look of scanlon i like the look of uh, bobby clark van Doek, lots of other players but city city's just the best team in the world at the moment and it really pains me to say this but i think they will win their fourth for me to predict anything else than city winning is outrageous honestly at this point um i feel like the top four you can make a claim for any of these three teams being in any of these positions. Um, I just genuinely think that Arsenal and United are going to struggle with kind of adjusting to the Champions League and their new squads. I think there's going to be some chemistry issues there. Liverpool is... Ma the majority of Liverpool is the same from last season. We've lost some key midfielders, obviously. The midfield is going to be entirely different. But the back line, the goalie, the attack is almost identical. So... I think Liverpool will make a quicker kind of adjustment to the squad and the members, and I think there's a lot more incomings for probably all three of these teams. Liverpool the most, because there's the most need for Liverpool, and United will probably sign a couple more players, and I could see Arsenal signing one more person. Then the bottom kind of half of the table, I think is fair to say. Um, I think these teams are all going to kind of have various struggles throughout the season. Mid-table... Tottenham just don't buy it. Villa, I think, will do well, but struggle. And Brighton, I think, is going to have a good thing, good campaign, all things considered. And then fifth and sixth, I don't know. 
I, ju I just have a feeling this is going to be the table at the end of the season. But as always, if you like the video, consider giving it a like. Subscribe for more football news, football content, tier lists, all the works. And comment down below, who do you think is going to win the Premier League this season? Matter of fact, comment down below and let me know your whole table. I'd love to talk about it. Let me know where you think I made a mistake and where I'm right. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sideline Sato. Peace.